to ruin the world, so uh, thank you very much for that. Um, we'll go for another round of questions, though. Um, yes, the guy at the back there, yeah. Um, Charlie Kiss, Cameron Green Party. <coughs> um, I'm interested to know if any of you have got any qualifications in economics and which economics book has influenced you the most. And can people keep their hands up for so I can see um, a range? Um, yeah, the woman there in blue or turquoise, maybe. Um, we've heard quite a lot of agreement about what we need to do as a party, and I suppose what I'm interested in is how we do it, and specifically how we communicate with people. So I'd like to know how you would go about carving out a niche for yourself in the media, given that people like Karen Lucas are not going to go away, people mm -hmm. like Jenny Jones are not going to go away, they're still out there, so you've got to kind of define yourself, mm -hmm. how would you go about doing that? Okay. Um, yeah. Alan Weekly, Haringey Green Party. The BBC has consistently colluded with the Department for Work and Pensions in bringing in a, a manufacture of consent for ever harsher benefit cuts, uh, such that. So the popular image of a benefit claimant is uh, rather spiteful. Uh, how would you uh, collude? I mean, how would you uh, operate so that you manage to uh, go along with the timing of these campaigns on the BBC and the Department for Work and Pensions? so that we have a better, more realistic view of claimants while Atos gets off scot-free. Okay, um, I'm going to start with Alan's question because I think it's so terribly important. I belong to um, a number of email lists of people campaigning for the rights of people uh, receiving benefits, particularly disability benefits which have been so harshly slashed away. Um, and there was a story from that of uh, a woman who walks with a stick, was standing at a bus stop, and a youth casually walking past just kicked the stick out from under her. And then when she fell over, he said, oh, so you really are actually you know, sick then and you need the stick. You're not just faking it. We've got you know, a absolutely toxic hideous media, Daily Mail, Telegraph, Sky, all of those, and I agree with you that the BBC hasn't done enough to counteract it. And part of the reason why the BBC hasn't done enough to counteract it is that the Labour Party, when did you last hear the Labour Party speak up and say, benefit claimants need their, ban claim need their, their benefits, need their support? It could be, you know, any person in society is one moment away from needing disability benefit whoever you are, unless you're one of the very few, you know, half and one percent maybe. We need to get out there and say, and, you know, really tackle the BBC and others on this and stand up for benefit claimants. That's something we, we absolutely must be doing. Um, Charlie, you asked about qualifications. Uh, many years ago I did an agricultural science degree and I did possibly the world's worst course in agricultural economics. Uh, we were taught the tragedy of the commons <coughs> as a matter of fact. So I'm not going to hold that up as an example, although I do think a science qualification is quite useful. But it's something that I've read a lot on, and in terms of the, the one book that I'd say that influenced me most, I, I recommend Prosperity Without Growth, I think, is, you know, if you want to actually really sum up, you know, an alternative model and explaining why we need the alternative model and how we can start to work towards it, then I think that probably is the book. Although I'd also point to Treasure Islands, which was what taught me about the corporation in the city of London and how we've actually got to tackle tax havens. They're actually one of the core problems we've got to tackle. Um, in terms of how communicating, um, you know, it's absolutely right and proper and you know, Question Time and all of those programs are still going to want Caroline and I don't think that's a problem. But Caroline, at the moment, would, you know, Perhaps we should you know, change Green Party policy and just allow cloning in one special case. <laughs> because because you know, Caroline could frequently be in three places at once if it was possible. There's a huge demand out there for people to... We, you know, we have some really interesting stories to say. We have different things to say to everyone, to everyone else has. So you know, I think there's plenty of space out there. I think we'd look... You know, Caroline, Jenny, Darren, Keith, uh, uh, Jean, 
all of us and say, you know, where are our special areas of interest, where do we want to do, and we, to some degree we divide the subjects off. But often it's going to be simply logistical, who's in the right city at the right time. And, you know, I'm, I've, I've been a journalist for 25 years on three continents. I was the editor of the Guardian Weekly newspaper. I know the media well, I'm comfortable with the media, and I could go and sit anywhere that Caroline can't make, and I think I could do a good job with it. Thank you. Um, I'll tackle Alan's uh, question first. I mean, yeah, we are hitting a, a wall of media misinformation, uh, just like the people of Greece have with the, uh, uh, the stories that came out about them uh, being work shy and retiring early and not paying their taxes. Of course, there was a tax collection problem there, but just as in most other countries, the worst uh, uh, failures to collect taxes were from the rich. Uh, but of course, we've got an, an opposition um, Gov um, an opposition in Parliament that doesn't take its opportunities to stand up uh, for the most vulnerable. And part of that is because they were responsible for bringing out the poorly named Welfare Reform Act, which uh, with um, Alan and, and Gray, uh, when I was uh, uh, doing campaigns for, for the Green Party, we uh, ensured that we got a response in from the Green Party to that document. Um, there's a 14% increase in hate crime on the streets due to this um, uh, mis um, misinformation that is touted around and sold to us uh, in, in our daily newspapers and with the BBC, again, giving kudos to this by repeating the, the facts and the statistics endlessly without any redress or without having the experts um, on their programmes or news items to give a balanced view, which is the very basic that the BBC should do and we must <coughs> challenge them at every opportunity. Uh, how to communicate, how to carve a niche in the market. Well, I have been thinking about this quite regularly. You know, if it came to it, I would probably... Uh, agree to go on the Graham Norton show if necessary. Um, <laughs> he has been trying desperately for a few years to get my ex uh, to go on his show uh, to ride his motorcycle through. He's all six foot six and a quarter of him uh, head to toe dressed in black. Uh, we may be able to get a, a push in there. But as Natalie says, seriously speaking, there are plenty of uh, good reasons why Greens, who have shown to be good communicators, should be invited on to various different shows to give our voice. Caroline isn't going to go away. We're not losing her. My way of seeing it is this. We're extending the team. We're extending the external communications team. We know that our leader is our primary communicator. When I was chosen to be the chair of the Coalition of Resistance, uh, not the face of the Coalition of Resistance, I mean, didn't say, but they did say the human face. It was, <laughs> it was partly because they liked my communication skills, the way that I'm very, very down to earth, um, and the fact that I'm determined, organised, uh, and made um, a very good contribution to the work that we were doing. So I would do everything, women's magazines, newspapers, public meetings, small, large, travel around the country, do whatever's needed. I like your communication skills too, Romain. I think they're very good. And I think one of the positives out of this is that actually the fact that we've got four good contenders standing for this position is actually going to carve us out some more media time. The fact that we've got a contested election, the ideas are out there, that's a positive that comes out of a leadership contest. And we shouldn't be scared of having contests and having debate. This is really, really healthy for us. Um, in terms of Kath's exact point, I think the, it's been made already, but the, the idea of added value, the, the idea that actually I, I can't be Caroline, I can't be Jenny, I can't be Darren, uh, I can be me. And the hope is that by being me, um, you, you're actually creating more opportunities where opportunities are there um, for a speaker, for a media um, you know, appearance. We're not going to miss them because we've got more people available and more people that are willing to take. Because actually, one of the issues that I noticed when I was working closely in elections in 2004, 2005 as elections coordinator is they'd say, oh, we'd like Caroline for this, please. 
well, Caroline's not available, will you have Darren? Well, no, we, we only want Caroline. And I think that's that's a barrier that we have and we'll, we will still have because Caroline is so amazing, basically. But I think we've got to try and extend that franchise out as much as we can. Um, Charlie, um, my undergrad degree was philosophy, politics and economics. Um, at that time, who did I think was most influential? Keynes made the most sense, probably still does. But I think you've got to be looking beyond Keynes now. If you're looking at limits to growth, you're looking at the reality of what we're facing now. When I was being taught in the early 90s, those boundaries, those assumptions that there's unlimited natural resources, they're all now gone. And I think it's looking what comes next after Keynes, what's the new vision? And we've got to help develop that. Um, in terms of understanding on that, I noted down two things. If you haven't seen The Corporation, it's a video, DVD these days, um, watch that. Also, The Spirit Level is a very good read. Finally, on the issue of benefit cuts, nothing makes me angrier than seeing what is happening to my kids in Skemmersdale. Skemmersdale is a really, really deprived area, and they are coming in, and they can't afford to go on trips. They've got the same clothes all year round. I know one lad has been wearing the same outfit since he started in September through to July this year. Same body warmer, same t-shirt and you know he must wash it. That, that's it, that's his thing, that's his life. And he walks in, he walks in three miles every day because his family are right on the edge. And people in those communities are being squeezed incredibly tightly. And the government has absolutely no idea how they live because it's 20 millionaires sitting around that cabinet table and they have never visited Skemmersdale. And if they do go and visit a working class or deprived community, they get a sanitised view, they get shown around by the council leader. They don't see the reality. And that is what we have to get across to the public because it's unfair, it's hidden, it's hidden away from people, the suffering, the difficulties that people have. And we have to go out and fight for that because the Labour Party don't do it anymore. where I live, called Pulgetley, and, um, and we have a, 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 a very mixed community, but it's a very poor community, and the Prince of Wales was visiting, and the uh, local partnership board, of which I'm a part, um, said, right, we've got to paint over all the graffiti, I don't know where we're going to find the money from, and I said, why paint it over? Leave it. It says fuck. So, leave it. <laughs> and they left it, okay, because... The smell of fresh paint accompanies the, the MPs, the royalty, everybody, and I didn't want that to happen when they came to us. I wanted, to, wanted them to see us and see what we were really like. And you know, more communities have got to do that because why are we shielding the deprivation and the problems from the people who most need to see it? Fortunately, my point was carried, but I think this is quite rare. I don't think they probably televised that bit of it, but still. <laughs> um, <laughs> in terms of qualifications, well, I have practically none. Um, the only, I left school at 15, I'm self-educated. Um, I did actually get a diploma in fashion design, and I did spend a lot of my life up in London working in the rag trade, which is a tough old business, but lots of fun. Um, so um, I'm a fast learner, <laughs> and I, I'm very quick especially with things I'm interested in, like economics, fractional reserve, all the things that are, are, you know, why does our world work this way? You have to drill down to find out. But I'll just say in terms of books, I can remember reading How Green Was My Valley, and it was right on the heels of the Upper Van disaster, and I remember watching as that slag heap came onto that school and killed all those children. And I, I remember, I could cry now thinking about it, I remember thinking, how was this allowed to happen? The local people knew the heap was moving. They knew something was going to happen. Would the coal board do anything about it? No, no, no. They came down, they taught, they said they'd do something, they never did anything. And hundreds of little children were killed under the stinking sky that day. And that really probably made me an environmentalist. Um, also, uh, I suppose the, the other book that made the most impact on me was Bleak House. Because then I worked out how our legal system worked, and it stinks. 
It stinks like just about everything in this world that's been manufactured for us to live in. It bloody stinks. And I want to do something about it. And I'm so passionate about it. But I'm, that's why I'm sitting here. Because no, I don't have a fantastic green background. And no, I don't have the best connections within the Green Party. But I am so passionate about changing the way things are done around here. And I'm prepared to stand up here any day of the week and talk. I'm prepared to go anywhere to anyone who will listen and to those who won't. Because I want people to know what's going on and better I want them to know how that can be changed. And that's what Greens are doing.